From pitching tidy sidey, a useless product that pissed everyone off, to presenting clothes with hidden cameras that bring everyone's worst nightmare to life, these are the worst ideas ever pitched on The Apprentice. Starting with the train wreck of a pitch, tidy sidey, this is one of those pitches that make you question the human mind. A group of apprentices put together a box on wheels to hold flat pack furniture. Basically, a side table on wheels was pitched in front of thousands. Would you do that? I mean, it seems like a great idea when you think it's more convenient than carrying individual pieces. But would anyone really invest in this? Seems like the answer to that was a hard no when Lord Sugar said the product sucks. Now that can be really heartbreaking for those who invest themselves in a product to pitch it. But hey, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. When you think of times an apprentice participant got turned down, this instance always comes to mind. It's also the short-sightedness that lost it the vote, because what about a trolley that can carry your stuff? Two people can do the work too. If you're pitching a product that dies as soon as you assume two people are doing the work together, it's better to stay silent. Another pitch that gives Tidy Sidey tough competition was what I'm calling failed humor. In one of the series editions, Steven Ugawala and his team came up with a unique idea for a video channel. They were pitching to the huge and wildly successful team of BuzzFeed. Now you already know, BuzzFeed specializes in stuff like this. So this was do or die for them. This video channel was supposed to be a comedy channel and, while it may have had some weight to it, it flopped hard with the execution. You're telling me somebody pitched a comedy channel with terrible jokes? That's rough! And that was the reality for this group. Their jokes fell embarrassingly flat. And can you believe one of the BuzzFeed panel members asked if the channel was for 8-year-olds? There's nothing as bad as your joke not making people laugh, let alone being insulted for your jokes. I want to salute this team's courage for sharing their idea. Just like this, Colony Jin is another horror story emerging from Apprentice. Oh boy, I don't know where to start with this one. If The Apprentice has taught us one thing, it's that all you need to do sometimes is think. The group behind Colony Jin didn't get the memo for sure. Starting with the name, er, troubling connotations anybody? The name echoes all sorts of unpleasant connotations related to British imperialism and the slave trade, and it gets worse. They also put a map of Africa on the label. A moment of silence for this group, please. In their defense, they really meant to use India. Need I say more? The judges heard the pitch and turned it down with harsh remarks. The pitch haunts the archives of Apprentice to this day. While we're on this topic, we can't leave Splish Splash behind. In retrospect, it's not a bad idea. It probably would sell in the day and age of social media, too. The execution fell flat, which is another lesson in how your execution can make or break your idea. The item was meant to prevent children from splashing water out of the bath. Those of us who live with kids or have kids of our own know this is a good idea. The mess kids tend to make in the bath can take a long time and a backache to clean up. However, when the candidate, Laura Hogg, pitched the product to Amazon's team, she asked them to order 1 million units, which may have been too high an aim. Karen Brady pointed out that this would not be helpful in emergency situations. This could have improved and possibly gone through if Laura had made her case. Often candidates fail because they do not make their case airtight. Regardless, this lies in the Hall of Fame of Apprentices' worst pitches. That said, the worst pitches do not end there. We have cat size to discuss. If you're a cat parent, this one's especially for you. These apprentice candidates presented a product that would make cats slimmer. Now, don't get me wrong, nobody wants that. But there are some cats who get super obese and that affects their health. This is why this product was fine, until it fell through because of the name and tagline. Let's just say both left a bad taste in the mouth and were confusing. If you haven't already guessed, it was a clever pun on reflective cat eyes on the road. Sure, but where's the connection? Not every cat-related thing can be put together. The tagline is drumroll please, see their light. I don't know what this was or what it meant, and neither did the judges. I'll always remember cat size as the ship that capsized. Oops, that had to be done. I've got another contender for the worst pitches ever in Apprentice, and it's the relationship guru. Lauren Riley, Felipe Alviar Baquero, and Daniel Lassman presented a board game together, and it was rejected immediately. They designed a game for relationships and presented it to Waterstones, Europe's largest bookshop. This board game was supposedly for dating, but it died a tragic death for many reasons. The team first of all ignored the negative feedback from the market research. The game came off as sexist from the get-go, but they persisted. 
Secondly, the team was super arrogant and stubborn about their concept which, as you know, never goes well. It's one thing to have faith in your product, it is another to be blinded by your stubbornness. The pitch became a disaster in front of Waterstones. It was criticized and rejected immediately for being offensive and sexist to say the least. One of the candidates, Mark, was triggered by this and he was sure to add fuel to the fire. His remark is one of the most well-known from the show till date. Upset about his star product being rejected, he said, It's hard to fly like an eagle when you're surrounded by turkeys. Now we appreciate the guts of the guy, but do we appreciate his business sense? That's a hard pass. If Relationship Guru had actually come out as a game because of how sexist and offensive it was, people would break up playing it instead of falling in love. And in the worst pitches, you have to hear about the Netro Fuel too. This one has to be my favorite. The task was not that difficult. The candidates were asked to bring forth a concept for a recipe kit. Harrison, from one group, wanted the focus of the kit to be healthy food. The idea was multidimensional in the sense that it had to be healthy not just for your body but mine too. Not a bad idea, he had us there in the first half. But then, he was convinced by his teammate to settle on the recipe kit being a chicken curry. Now isn't that something gymmers and healthy eaters can celebrate? Imagine chicken curry being a healthy meal for you. Hell, even I'd become healthy then. The rationale was that 23 million curries are eaten every week. If the team can incorporate healthy ingredients into it, then they have hit the jackpot. Harrison explained all of this to Lord Sugar, but there's one thing he got wrong. The team didn't really make it that healthy. You can't possibly make curry in a healthy way. It needs the spices, the oil, and even the butter at times. The judges really doubled down on the team saying that the name sounds like fuel for a hybrid car rather than food. The last one among these pitches has to be our worst nightmare, wearable tech. Daniel Lastman pitched something that should never see the light of day, jumpers with a tiny camera in them. The camera would be at chess level. It would allow you to take pictures and record videos too. Now they were playing right into the privacy fears which have always been a big issue. So they should give in a strong pitch and explained why their product was worth investing in. The worst turn for this group came when Daniel confessed he wouldn't wear his own creation. Where's the lie, Daniel? Nobody would want to wear this. But of course, serial killers do exist and they would love to. This product could have been possibly pitched to undercover agents. But any other company or investor would be risking a barrage of lawsuits with this product. Plus, does this knitwear not get washed or is the camera water resistant? Plenty of awkward silences later, this pitch was put in its grave. So there you have it, folks. From cameras in your knitwear to a box on wheels, these were the worst pitches that have seen the light of day in Apprentice.